Hi, and welcome back to my 11th Ether Physics video. Today I wanted to talk about some of the inspirations for my Ether idea, because this idea isn't entirely made by me, of course. I've, I've seen a lot of videos on the internet. I have my own intuition, of course, but it was mostly of these unknown, unknown physicists. I don't even know if they're physicists, unknown scientists. I think I can better call them, because physicists only explicitly think about forces and energy and these were for instance uh, practical physicists or or theoretical physicists i think it's fun to write the names down because some of them you might already know and some might be completely random or completely new for you but they're definitely interesting to examine one time or to check out for one time so i think i'm gonna start with writing them down writing them down this is gonna be a list of Unknown, unknown scientists. Well, they're known to the internet, but not to everyone on the internet. But they are a little bit known, and you might have already heard of them. And I'm gonna write them down first. For me, it started with, of course, Nikola Tesla. He was the first one to really blow my mind, but he is so, so known to mankind. Everybody knows Tesla. The first one I actually got a hold of, the person who came up with the coil idea, in the star shape, star shaped coil. So this is a coil. And as you all know, a normal coil would look like, I don't know if you can see it, it's pretty small, but these are ordinary coils. I can draw them because the only thing you have is you have a wire, a copper wire, and you circle it and you get yourself a coil. You probably already know, but once you put electricity through the coil, you get yourself a magnetic field. And most of you already know that. And, and if you have a simple wire, just in one direction, you get yourself one big field around it. They call it the right-hand rule. So when electrons are flowing from the negative towards the positive, I don't know if I'm right now, but I guess it was from plus to minus, then the magnetic field would be in that direction. I can be wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not important for the thing that I'm trying to tell here. Whenever you have a cable, you get a magnetic field around it, whenever, whenever there is a current flowing, of course. Uh, whenever you have a current flowing uh, through a coil, you get a, the same result as a permanent magnet. The interesting part about this coil is that it, it, it is a sort, sort of cross-section between a coil with this form and a, and a donut shaped coil. So I'm going to show you in front of the camera the two different coils that I was aware of. So I have two coils here, as you can see, two different coils. When you combine these two, you can have a coil like this. This is a star shaped coil. You might, you might already know this coil because most of the viewers are known with the dark side of YouTube, so you might already recognize it's a star-shaped coil. It is somewhat the same as this kind of coil. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to watch through. Oh, I can see the lens. Uh, a coil that has a star shape or that's a fortitial torus. It, it has the same, same magnetic field around it. So it's still this donut shape magnetic field, but it's, it's spinning. So we have a spinning magnetic field, so we wouldn't even draw it like this, we would draw it more like that shape. So it, it's a vortex of a magnetic field. So this, is not, this does not count for this coil, this only counts for a star-shaped coil or for, as they call it, a rodin coil. Marco Rodin. And Marco Rodin is known for, they call it the rodin coil after Mark Rodin, because he, he came up with the idea. And I think I'm gonna show you with a picture in, in the video. Another interesting scientist uh, I, I stumbled upon was Victor Schauberg. And one, one, of, one of my viewers already told me that I should check into Victor Schauberger. No. Victor Schauberger uh, is known for fortitial flows, I guess, because uh, he made, he made some uh, some interesting platforms that had a lot of thrust by using fortitial means. So he made yes some kind of turbo thing. I'm not quite sure. So I'm 
I, I have seen his works and his works are all about airflow and in the same order. So it, it's about particle flows in, in a fortissial torus kind of way. So definitely an interesting man to read about or to search around the internet. So another of my inspirations, a real inspiration for me was Mr. Dan Winters. Dan Winters has, uh, he called it, I guess, the star mother. And he talks a lot about uh, the golden mean ratio. And in his star mother idea, he, he explains again a fortitial torus on another way. He, and he starts with this tetrahedron and he builds it up into a huge, huge dodecahedron. Uh, so that means it's, uh, dodeca means do to deca ten, so it's twelve shaped. Yeah, I don't know. Is it a cube? No, it's not a cube. It's just it has twelve planes in one thing, one one shape. The dodecahedron. Next one is a, is for me a in very interesting uh, physicist. He's an experimental physicist. I think he's from Sweden, and his name is Eugene Podkletnov. Did I write it right? Yeah, Eugene Podkletnov. Eugene Podkletnov was one of the first physicists that had a superconductor uh, floating uh, on top of an electromagnetic field that was alternating, an alternating electromagnetic field, having a superconductor flying on top of it. And whenever he had a, rot a rotational acceleration on the superconducting plate, so he, you, you, you rotate it, not when it's constantly rotating, but when you accelerate it or decelerate it, you measure a weight differential difference uh, on top of it. So the idea of his uh, experiment. So he had a superconducting plate, and these are alternating electromagnetic coils. So there's a, a magnetic field coming out of this thing, holding the plates in between. You have a measuring device for, for your weight, so this is a measuring device and you measure something to know the weight of exactly, so for instance 10 grams or whatever, 10 grams of matter, it doesn't matter what kind of matter. matter. Whenever you rotate the superconducting plate, uh, whenever you accelerate or decelerate the rotation of the, the superconducting plate, the, everything that is, uh, is it perpendicular? Yeah, the, the, everything that's perpendicular to the plane, so in an angle of 90 degrees on top of it, everything loses weight. So he figured out that the rotation of a superconducting plate, the acceleration, deceleration of the rotation of a superconducting plate has effect on the gravity experienced by anything on top of it. So Interesting fact. Next one in my list is, I think he is one of the most famous of this list. He's one of the most famous physicists of this list. He, he might be a little bit crazy or awkward, but we all love him in a way, because he can explain electricity like no one else can. And his name is Eric Dollar. Eric Dollar is known for his, he calls it the theory of anti-relativity. I think what he means I don't know what he means. So he's, he, he, you can find him under the anti-relativity idea. He knows a lot of, of the history of electronics and of magnetic fields, electric fields, and the whole idea behind it. See you next time.